What's up everybody, Nate here. So our entire economy right now is in a really weird spot and it's confusing a lot of people because they don't know who to listen to. On one hand, you have the stock market. The stock market has been saying that we are going to face a recession sometime soon and most CEOs believe a recession is coming in 2022 or in 2023. That has caused the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and Dow to lose basically all of their gains over the last two years and essentially reset. At the same time though, inflation is wreaking havoc on the consumer because it's at 8.6%, an over 40 year high. Now all of that is happening and if you listen to the stock market, a recession is coming in 2022, but this is where things get a little confusing. According to the Federal Reserve, our economy is healthy, our jobs market is healthy, and while a recession is possible, it is not something that is definitely going to happen in this year or in 2023. So like I said, there is a lot of confusion happening right now in the United States. And today I want to talk about both sides and essentially go over who you should be listening to, who is right when we talk about what is going to happen with the future of our economy and kind of clear up all of the confusion that is going on with all of the discourse between the stock market and the Fed right now. Now, the reason the message between the stock market and the Federal Reserve gets so confusing is because the stock market and the Federal Reserve have completely different ideas and goals for the United States economy. I want to focus on the stock market first. So the stock market is all about growth and all about growth in the future. When an investor puts their money in the New York Stock Exchange, they are essentially betting on that company, but more importantly, they are betting on the United States economy. They are betting that things are going to get a lot better. You wouldn't want to put your money into something that in 10, 15, and 20 years from now is going to be a whole lot less than what what you put in in the first place. You want it to be a whole lot more, so you are investing. You are putting that money in and hoping that it does a whole lot better 10, 20, and 30 years down the road. Now, in order for a company to do better, they have to make a lot more sales. They have to make a lot more products and they have to be groundbreaking in general. You don't want to invest in a company that is doing exactly the same thing as somebody else and not really making a whole lot of money. That makes them stand out and it makes them a whole lot more valuable compared to the competition. As a company continues to perform, well, then the stock price goes up because a lot more investors are interested in that company. A company is going to be making a whole lot more sales, they're going to be making a whole lot more revenue. So yeah, that company is doing really well and people are interested in it. That makes it so a lot more investors buy that stock because they want to also make money. They want to own that company because they're able to make a whole lot more money selling that individual share a lot later on down the road. So you have to kind of keep that into perspective when you think about the stock market analyzing the economy, because if you really think about it, the stock market and the Federal Reserve have access to all of the same exact data. They can look at everything in the exact same way. So how can they actually analyze things so very differently? Well, that's because the stock market wants to continue to grow. These companies on the New York Stock Exchange and businesses in general want to continue to grow. They want other investors to be interested in their company and the only way that they can do that is by providing more revenue and providing more sales. That makes investors want to buy that stock and that helps businesses grow. Businesses couldn't really grow if they only had sales to go off of. If they only grew from their sales, well, that would be very slow, but with things from the stock market, they can now give investors a partial share of their company on paper and in exchange, investors give them that capital and liquidity to continue to go out and grow. So investors and businesses on the New York Stock Exchange are focused on that growth. And over the last two years, businesses have grown a whole lot because of extra investor liquidity. Because of things like stimulus and because of things like really low interest rates, businesses could take on a whole lot of debt. That helped them grow because investors were pouring their money into the stock market. 
Everything from businesses like IPOs to well-established companies on the stock market have exploded in value over the last two years because of all of this money from the federal government. That is now an opportunity for businesses to grow because if they have a lot of sales and that shows investors that they have a lot of demand and with a lot of demand, they have to keep up on that. So they take all of that investor liquidity and they pour it into making more products and they pour it into building new factories and they pour it into just growing as a company. That creates a relationship between businesses and investors and it's good for both of them because businesses are going to continue to go out and grow. They can hire more people, they can sell more products and investors gain a whole lot in that exchange too because now they hold on to something that is valuable. They have ownership in this company that is really valuable and people really want so the appreciation continues to go up and 20, 30, and 40 years years from now, investors can sell that stock and make a whole lot of money. Everything over the last two years has set new record highs. The housing market, of course, the stock market, the commodities market, and cryptocurrency all set new record highs. What that simply means is investors had so much money. They were pouring so much money into the stock market and so much money was moving around that now everything is overinflated. Everything is inflated. If you think investors had a lot of money, well, the American public had a lot of money too. And because a lot of Americans Americans are also investors. Well, they got a lot of that money from the stock market too. So with stock market values going up, brand new companies coming out, all of this money started to flow around. But the problem is, like I said, inflation has become a problem for the American consumer. Now, consumers are not spending as much as they were before. So immediately liquidity is going to go away because businesses are going to put out earnings reports that show that they're not making as many sales. Inflation is so high that consumers don't have as much money to spend. So with them not spending as much, businesses aren't making as much in sales and they're putting that out in earnings reports showing investors that there just isn't as much demand, meaning investors are pulling their money out and there's not as much liquidity. On top of that, with inflation, now we have the Federal Reserve coming in trying to do all that they can to lower inflation. Now, like I said, let's talk about the Federal Reserve next because you really have to understand what the Federal Reserve is saying and how it completely contrasts what the stock market is saying. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has talked a lot lately about the United States economy and the future of inflation. He has talked a lot about raising interest rates and the Federal Reserve Reserve has definitely done that as in May of 2022, they started to raise their interest rates pretty aggressively. And just a few weeks ago, they raised their interest rates by 0.75%, more than they have since 1994. This is all to bring down demand in our economy. So like I said before, when you have a whole lot of money circulating throughout your economy, well, that means inflation is going to go up because the Federal Reserve printed a whole lot of money and people have money. So they're going to go out and spend it on just about anything. It doesn't matter what. What matters is that people are spending at record rates. As they do that, businesses have to keep up. But because of the pandemic, they haven't been able to keep up like they would have liked to. So they're not able to supply as many products. But at the same time, prices have to go up because they're still producing more than they were before. You simply cannot have that level of spending in an economy forever because you're going to run into supply and demand issues. That is exactly why the Federal Reserve is now starting to tackle inflation, raising interest rates, and also eliminating all of its stimulus for Wall Street and everyday Americans. They want to bring down that demand so much that Americans have a much harder time spending money because without that money circulating throughout our economy, prices can hopefully start to come down. They want to make it really difficult so that way all of those prices start to come down. But this is where things get really confusing because the Federal Reserve has flip-flopped on our economy before. In 2021, they talked a lot about inflation and they said a lot of it is coming from those supply chain issues and that it is transitory. Eventually, inflation is going to come down on its own, so they don't really need to get all that aggressive with their stimulus and their interest rates. But the reason 
reason they are changing it now is because they are starting to look a lot at the numbers and they're realizing that inflation is not really coming down. But the only reason that the Federal Reserve is able to tackle inflation in this way is because they believe our economy is in a really healthy position. For one, they believe that jobs are really stable in the US, unemployment is at around 3.6%, the lowest it's been since around the 1960s. In theory, with more people employed, more people are able to spend consistent income, meaning that they can go out and buy products on a regular basis so businesses can naturally grow, meaning the stock stock market can grow. They also believe that wages and incomes are really solid too and that those are continuing to go up as inflation goes up. So they believe that our economy can handle these interest rate spikes and stimulus basically exiting. If our economy couldn't handle it, then they wouldn't be able to raise their interest rates because they would be deleting demand that basically wasn't there to begin with. Because that demand is there, well, they don't want to see as much demand. The only reason demand exists is because there's so much money. So the money will still be there. However, the demand will go away because the prices for everything and the interest rates for everything are going to go away as well. So with all of that being said, what exactly is the Federal Reserve's goal? Well, the Federal Reserve's goal with our economy is to keep inflation as low as possible. You see, banks, other financial institutions, and businesses get their money from the Federal Reserve first and foremost. Federal Reserve creates money. The United States government is a currency issuer, meaning they have the right to print as much money as they want, and sometimes they need to print money. They need to print money in order to grow our economy because if there's only so much money, well, that kind of stifles your growth. You're not able to grow as much because there's not enough money for all of it to go around. And as your population grows and as businesses continue to pop up, you need a whole lot more money. So the Federal Reserve has to print money, but they also have to keep inflation low. So they have to constantly keep that balance between supply and demand. The supply, of course, being money and demand being, well, how people go out and spend it. Demand has a lot to do with their interest rates. So if interest rates are really low, then it's easy for people to go out and spend. And when interest rates are low, the Federal Reserve wants people to go out and spend. That essentially kept us out of a massive recession in 2020 because people are going out and spending possibly beyond their means and they had the money in order to do so. Now, what exactly happens when inflation is high? Well, exactly what is going on right now. The Federal Reserve has to throw everything they can at inflation in order to bring it down. So they have to raise their interest rates. They have to eliminate their stimulus because they don't want people to spend a whole lot of money. They have to do this in a way that is presentable to the American consumer. They don't want people to be really scared. They don't want people to not go out and spend money. So they can't come out and say, well, inflation is really terrible. We have to raise our interest rates aggressively or else we're going to run into a recession. They have to be very careful with how they frame things. So they have to keep the American people in mind here. They don't want people to stop spending. The stock market, on the other hand, has no problem scaring the American consumer because this is life or death for them. A lot of these companies, especially the ones that are very fragile and launch as an IPO on Wall Street over the last couple of years, if they don't make these sales or they don't get this investor liquidity, they are going to go under, which means that business and those jobs are basically going to disappear from our economy. They have to tell people how it is. They have to tell people that we're not making a whole lot of money and it's because of inflation. The Federal Reserve Chairman also wants to get reelected and the President also wants to get reelected too. So the Federal Reserve is going to do what it needs to in order to keep the peace right now in the United States. That is the biggest difference between the Federal Reserve and the stock market. The stock market is looking at growth and that can be in the future. We're talking five, 10, 15, and 20 years. The Federal Reserve is focused on right now. They wanna bring inflation down right now so people can spend and those businesses can grow for the long term. However, they don't really care about the economy in the future. They don't really care what inflation is going to look like five, 10, and 15 years from now. That is exactly why they had no problem printing a whole lot of money in 2020 because they want to do what is good for right now. 
They wanna keep the American consumer happy right now. So in terms of who you should listen to and who is actually right here, the stock market or the Federal Reserve, well, the fact of the matter is neither is technically right because right is very subjective. One is looking at right now and trying to improve things right now so everything can grow, and the other is looking at how things are going to grow in the future. These massive corporations and these businesses, the ones that are well established, while they're having a lot of problems in 2022, they are doing just fine. They are still making sales. None of the major companies that we see on the New York Stock Exchange are going to go under. They are well diversified in this economy. What they are most concerned with is not continuing to grow at an exponential rate like we saw in 2020 and in 2021. But you also can't fault them for that because they have a fiduciary duty to help out their shareholders and to continue to grow their company as fast as possible. So if that's not happening, of course, they are going to be very concerned. The Federal Reserve, though, does not care about these businesses expanding. They want consumers to be able to spend right now. They don't care what happens in the future with our economy. They want consumers to be able to go out and spend their money. So they're going to create financial conditions in which consumers can do that. So when it comes to which one is right, neither one of them are technically right. You have to look at both sides though and be able to understand them because this is all going to come down to what you decide to do with your money and how you decide to save and how you decide to spend and invest right now in this economy. So I know listening to both sides can be very confusing because they have completely opposite things to say on the issue. Are we having a recession? Is a recession coming in 2022? Here is what you need to take away from this video. Both sides are going to be saying a whole lot of things, but what you do with your money is way more important than the idea of a recession. A recession sounds really bad, and in a lot of ways, a recession is bad. A lot of the times, jobs are lost. A lot of the times, businesses disappear, and that means that you are most likely going to be able to spend a whole lot less money. It's important to remember that a recession is just a word. A recession is just a term to describe an economic downturn. Term, but that is a general economic downturn for everyone. There is always going to be opportunities for those that are willing to see it. An economic downturn doesn't always have to be a downturn for your money. There's a lot of noise right now. A lot of these sides are going to be saying a lot of different things, and that is because of their perspective and where they're coming from and what they'd like to see. You have to try to cut through all of that right now and create a long-term financial plan that is going to outlive not only this recession, but the recession of the future, because I can guarantee you that we will see a possible recession again. It's going to be a lot different than the one we're facing right now, but you have to prepare for that. So with doing that, you have to look at the stock market, you have to look at what the Federal Reserve says, and you have to be able to analyze what both of them are saying and where they are coming from and how that is all going to affect your plan. Now, once you know how that affects your plan, create something that is going to be able to bounce off of all of that. So that way, when they have their problems, when they raise their rates, when businesses start to go under, you are always successful. Meaning you are a winner no matter the economic time. When things are good, you are a winner. When things are bad, you are still a winner. But that is it for me, everybody. Be be kind out there, and I'll see you all in the next one.